Good afternoon. My name is Catherine Lyle and I'm an advisor with Seed Space Venture Capital, an early stage venture capital company founded here in Australia. And it's great to be involved with the Crisp Venture Investment Summit. So Seed Space, as an early stage VC, has been very focused on financial services. We saw early on that financial services, particularly markets, are very highly disruptable. And we also saw that technology was really shifting towards financial services across the value chain, from execution to clearing to settlement, from B2B to B2C to B2B to C. Um, the size of the market in financial services, the growth of fintech in those markets, and of course the profitability of our very large financial institutions here, really propelled us to set up this early stage fund last year. And we invest in fintech companies across all the major fintech cycles. And we'll talk about some of that later on. Uh, we've really been positioning ourselves at the center of the startup ecosystem here in Australia. And the partners and advisors in the fund have global experience in US, Europe, APAC, and here in Australia. Uh, we've partnered with some really highly regarded companies um, that are very experienced and uh, they provide us a range of services from really strong operational support, deal flow, which is really important, and obviously overall industry support. And we're really pleased to be not just a partner, but a sponsor with all the major FinTech uh, institutions in Australia. A lot of people ask us what our criteria is for, for investing in companies. And especially now with all the COVID-19 challenges, and I'd have to say that we, our, our, our kind of criteria for looking at investments hasn't really changed much in these times because the fundamental tenets that underpin all our investment decisions remain in challenging times and in good times. So the three things we focus on the most and many things flow out from this are one, the team. Who are the founders? What's their experience like? Um, are they a strong team? The second thing is what's the problem that's being solved? And is it a problem that actually wants to be solved? And the third thing is the technology. Is it truly groundbreaking technology? Is this a defensible business play? And then while we're talking about founders, some of the key criteria we look for in those founding teams is certainly experience and that subject matter expertise. But we also really look for things like resilience, Coachability is really important. If you're going to take outside capital and you get a lot of expertise that comes with that, it's really important to be able to accept that expertise and take advice, take challenge even. Um, so coachability is a really important part with the founding team. And the fourth one, which is you could argue is almost the most important with founders is that whole um, vision and values. And that brings into it culture, it brings into it ethics, and it also plays straight into the governance model going forward. And as an early stage investor, seeing a really strong governance model, a really strong culture, a really strong vision and set of values being deployed out across the organisation right from the start is, gives us great confidence that the company will grow and expand from Series A to Series B to Series C in a much smoother fashion. Having to tackle those problems at a later date is often very expensive for everybody concerned. Obviously right now supporting our existing companies is really critical and there's a number of things we're doing right now as a fund to do that. So first of all capital. So those of our existing invested companies are benefiting from follow-on rounds um, and where necessary we're bringing in co-founder co-funding partners with us in seed rounds that are in the follow-on seed rounds that are happening right now. We also do a lot of mentoring with our companies and we are an open door for any advice at any time when needed. And as you can imagine in the last month or two for some of those companies, um, it's been really challenging. Uh, capital preservation has been a real focus at the same time as trying to push forward with growth and, and have, having trusted people to talk through that is really important. We also provide introductions and referrals to the companies in our portfolios, and they have the benefit of our much bigger and broader networks. Um, where it's a pretty strong team if you have a look at our website. Um, so any companies coming into financial services uh, can really benefit from that, from that group. 
we're often asked are we still looking for new opportunities right now because a lot of people are sitting on their hands and a lot of people haven't got as much capital to deploy. The short answer is yes, we are. And it's at times of great change and disruption that interesting and agile companies are created. So to solve for immediate problems and for future needs. So we are always on the lookout for new companies coming down the pipeline. There is a caveat, of course, that we are prioritizing our existing investee companies because we really want to ensure that they survive and thrive. And that includes following or doing following on investments where appropriate, as I mentioned before. We get asked about our investment philosophy quite a lot and what guidance we give to others who are investing and looking to invest one right now. And I would say diversity within your portfolio, if you're looking at early stage companies, is really critical. Um, having a really good portfolio distribution across, across your early stage um, companies, especially in fintech, is really, really important because you don't want to really, you really don't want to miss out on any outlier invest investments that generate major returns at that early stage with your capital. And that's why we believe an early stage VC fund like Seedspace, and there are a few small companies like ours in Australia starting to flourish. It's a really good way to ensure diversity across a broad range of fintech silos in your portfolio. So definitely worth uh, looking at the early stage VC funds like ourselves. We have a pretty strong due diligence and investment committee process and we are often asked what we think are going to be the star performers over the next uh, year or so in the areas that we operate in, as I mentioned, that's in fintech across the broad range of silos. And uh, our view right now is the sort of the four key areas we'll see some significant um, performance enhancement going forward is uh, the wealth tech space, uh, prop tech, property market, payments and actual marketplaces, whether that be platforms or SaaS, et cetera. So lots of opportunities going forward and, and very much worth investigating uh, as an investor, the opportunities out there. I mentioned before, we've got a strong team and we've all been working very hard to understand the implications of, of things like the COVID-19 crisis right now on current markets, what the future of those markets look like, and how we may help markets evolve and develop and thrive as we go forward. We've been asked, what is our thesis post COVID-19 and how do we see things changing at all? And I guess we would see a, a, an even stronger and more enhanced adoption of technology uh, across the board in all areas of our lives and but specifically to enable more efficient use of financial services both at the retail end and right through to the corporate end. Um, the, this crisis has really highlighted to all of us the importance of technology in enabling new ways to do business and to work whether it be remote working from home, doing digital sales engagement to tech ops and it's we believe it's going to really accelerate the acceptance and adoption of technology across a broad range of financial service. And that really underpins what Seedspace's primary fintech thesis is all about actually. So as a fund, we've spent the last nine months when we, when we started uh, proving our own proof of concept. Um, the founders of the fund and advisors have put their own money in and initial investments have been made across seven plus companies, which are all We've seen some really significant upticks on second rounds for some of those as well. And so we're now just opening ourselves to external investors for the first time. And we would welc welcome a conversation with anyone who's interested in understanding the alternative space and having a, a real conversation about diversification of your portfolio in that space. Uh, I'll remain around uh, after this on the YouTube chat and I'm very happy to answer any questions. Thank you very much for your time.